So there's a concept that I should have gone over earlier in the series, but uh, there's no better time than now to take care of that. And in this video, number 16 in the series, surprisingly already, I'm going to show you how to redirect output. And this is going to be the precursor to the next video where I'm going to be talking about different streams. So this is an important video. It's gonna be pretty easy. We'll get more advanced in the next video, but I definitely wanna make sure that I show you how to redirect output from one command into another command. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so here on my laptop, I'm actually using a different distribution. I was doing a review of a distro called Endeavor OS. This is actually a beta, but it's something that I was checking out. So if you're wondering why the prompt here looks a bit different, well, now you know. So redirecting output. So what I'm going to do is actually show you some examples of that. I'm going to redirect output from one command into another. Now, an easy example of this, I'll use the ls command with no arguments here. You know, it's just showing me a bunch of folders. And of course, we can do ls-l. But this installation has no personal files, so it's just a bunch of folders. But that doesn't matter. What we want to do is actually redirect output. And ls is an easy command. It's like the easiest command to do. And it's also an easy way for me to show you redirecting output. But in this case, what I'm going to do first is redirect the output into a file. So I'll clear the screen, and then I'm going to do ls-l, and then what I'm gonna do is type the greater than symbol, and then I'm going to type another space, and I'm gonna give it a file name. So I'll call it uh, file.txt because I'm not very creative today. So what is this actually going to do? Well, it might be obvious if you look at it, and I did mention redirect in the word file, so you could probably put it together what it's going to do, but just in case, let's go ahead and see what happens. So nothing shows up on the screen. It just returned the prompt to the next line. But if I do ls again, we can see that I have a file that was not here before, file.txt. Well, what's inside that file? cat file.txt. So cat, I just want to show what's in that file. I could, I could also do you know, less, I could do more, but I'm going to use cat and press enter. And basically it's the output of the command as you probably guessed. It's not showing the colorized output. LS does support colorized output, but it doesn't actually show that in the file, which is probably to be expected. What you can see is interesting is that file.txt is here its size is zero. It's not actually zero though, because if we look at it, it actually has a size to it. But basically what happened is when the file was first created, it didn't have the contents yet, so it was zero. But then this output was then put into the file. A little bit of a chicken and egg problem there. But you can see what happened when we ran that command. We basically used the greater than symbol and we redirected the output of this command into a file. And that allowed us to go ahead and, uh, you know, basically save or capture the results of that command into a file. Now, what happens if I run the command again? And again, and again, and again, and again. So I ran it a bunch more times here. Let's go ahead and take a look. So the size didn't change. Still the same size as it was before. And if I cat the file, the same contents are there. So having a single greater than symbol, this is a very important concept to know because it's also potentially dangerous because maybe I have an exist existing file and I would like the results of a command to be put at the end of the file, but I want to retain everything in there. And if you use a single greater than symbol, it's going to overwrite that file. It blows it away and replaces it with the output of the command. So ls-l, the content of that command is going to be the content of the file, or I should say the output of that command is going to be the content of the file. And no matter how many times you run it, it's just going to replace the file. But if you do two greater than symbols, we can see that it's going to be different. And I'm going to do it a bunch of times here just to kind of over dramatize it, but we'll just see what's inside the file. Quite a bit. You can see here that 
you know, it basically duplicated that. So basically what you could take from that is having two greater than symbols is effectively the same as saying I want to append to the file. I don't want to overwrite it. I want the output of this command to go to the end of the file. And again, that's an important distinction because I personally, I think at least, I think every Linux administrator has done this unfortunately, at least once, where they overwrite a file they really didn't want to and they blow it away. Oops, darn it, I really meant to append it. But you know what, um, shame on me, I should have used two greater than symbols. So I guess what I'm saying is be very careful with this because if you had an important file, you could potentially wipe that out and, and you, know, you don't want to do that if it's important or you want to retain that. So it's an important distinction. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but before we do, I just wanted to mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode is an awesome provider of cloud Linux servers. Setting up your Linux cloud servers or Linodes is quick and easy with their intuitive cloud manager interface. There are multiple instance types available to make any app or service flexible and scalable. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Use your Linode server to host a website, set up a VPN, create a Nextcloud instance, host a game server, and more. You can set up your Linodes in a data center nearest you with their latest opening in Mumbai in July 2019. If you need assistance, 24-7, 365 friendly support is available by phone or support ticket. Visit the URL on the screen right now to get started with $20 in credit you can use towards setting up your very own Linode. There are Linux instance types available for as low as $5 a month. So let's go ahead and get back to the video. Now. Another thing that we can do, and I'll use ls as an example because, you know, it's an it's a easy example. I'll just ls again, and we have all of the contents here plus the file.txt that we have already used. And now, what we could do is take the output of one command and have it serve as the input to another command. We can chain commands together. So that's what I'm going to give you an example of right now. So I'm going to run ls-l, and that's what the output is going to look like normally. But what I'm going to do is press space, and I'm going to type the pipe symbol, which on the US keyboard is the key above enter, or near backspace. And that's a pipe symbol, so it's just a straight line. And then I'm going to pipe that into a different command. I'm going to grep for the word file. So when I press enter, we can see that my ls command only contains one line. Normally, it would contain several. You know, the difference is this versus just that one line. So what grep allows me to do is limit the output to some kind of search criteria. I'm searching for anything that includes file. So of course, it's only going to give me this right here. But watch what happens if I do this. I'm gonna grep for a capital D and then O. Press Enter. I get two lines because both of these lines match that. They actually include DO. And documents and downloads, those two directories do match, so it's going to show that. But what I'm doing is I'm taking the output of this command and then I'm chaining it as the input to another command, in this case, grep, and then I'm grepping for DO. So it allows me to take the output of one command and put it into the other. So what I'm gonna do right now is give you a more practical example of chaining output or output redirection. So suppose you have a log file, but you only want to get relevant individual lines and you wanted to omit any duplications. So we're gonna use the file.txt file again, but we're gonna actually do things a little bit differently. So just to show you what it includes right now, we have this output right here, which is, again, it's just ls a bunch of times. So I'm gonna do cat file.txt, and I'm gonna redirect it into a command called sort. What sort will do is practically alphabetize or sort the individual lines in the file. And then I'm gonna do space, I'm gonna redirect again, and I'm gonna redirect that output to a command called unique. So basically the first command, cat file.txt, is gonna show me the contents of that file. And then it's gonna redirect that output into the input of the sort command. The sort command is gonna sort the lines. 
and then give output, and its output is gonna be redirected into the unique command. So let's go ahead and see what happens. What do you think is going to happen? So there's actually gonna be something unique that's gonna happen about this that you might not expect, but I'll go ahead and press enter. And we can see something interesting here. So we only have each of the lines of the output for folders one time each, even though they appeared a bunch of times since I ran the command over and over again. It's only there one time, but the file.txt, it's actually there quite a few times. So why is that? So the reason for that is because every time I was running the ls command and I was appending to the file, the file.txt changed its size each time. You can see that it actually is a different size each occurrence here. So that's why file.txt is actually not, it's actually inconsistent and shows a bunch of times whereas the directories are not. Now to fix that, I could simply do this, cat file.txt, and then I can redirect it into grep. And you don't need a space here, but I always put one, just looks better. And then what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna use the dash V option. What the dash V option will do is show me lines that do not include a string. Because normally we're grepping for something and we wanna show that something, but in this case, I wanna not see something. And what I don't wanna see is file.txt. So let's just go ahead and see what happens. Now what we can see here is I see every line but I don't see file.txt listed because I omitted that by using the dash V option. So I'm going to overwrite, or actually I'm going to redirect the output into a file and I'm going to create a new file called new file.txt. And then if I check out the contents of that file, we can see that sure enough, we do not actually have the file.txt listed at all. So now what happens if we run the previous command? So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that up. And here it is, cat file.txt, but I actually called it a different name, didn't I? So I'm gonna to have to give it that name, new file. I'm gonna do the same thing, redirect it into sort, and then also unique. And we can see that we don't have all those lines of file.txt listed there because I resaved the file without that. And now we see something different. We do have total listed twice because that did change over the course of me running the command over and over again, but you could basically see how this is useful. And the reason why this is useful is if you have a misbehaving process and you're looking at its log file, it might show a specific item like hundreds of times, but maybe you only just need to see it the one time and that can basically cut the size of the file. And then a really easy example of redirect and probably one I should have started with is word count. So I could do ls and then grep for, actually I need to do ls-l, redirect that to wc, we get a number. Um, without going too much into the wc command, that's a word count, but that's not what we're using it for. What we actually wanna do is dash l, which is line number. How many items do I actually have in my local directory? 13. Not exactly true because there's gonna be other things there that are not files, but the point is that you know you can basically use wc-l to get a general idea how many items are in a current working directory or any other directory for that matter. So I could basically just do uh, ls-l against the Etsy directory and get a completely different number, which could be useful if you wanna know a general idea of how many files are in a folder. In an example of maybe a mail server that has a stuck email, you wanna know about how many emails are there. And we can certainly limit the output to the actual number of items, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. But I just wanted to show you how to redirect and also how to append output into a file when I went ahead and showed you all of that. So I think we should be all set. So in the next video, we're gonna take this concept and we're going to get a little bit more advanced with it. So um, it's not too bad, but I think you just need to make sure you understand redirecting um, output from one command into the input of another command, also capturing the output of a command into a file. Just make sure you understand that right. And then when the next video is uploaded, you could take it just, your understanding just a little bit further. So I'll see you there. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. 
If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.